That was uh, Jim Burklow, who uh, is an ordained United Church of Christ pastor and also uh, very um, knowledgeable about mindfulness, which he's been involved with for many years. And uh, he's the Associate Dean of Religious Life at the University of Southern California. Do you think it's uh, different or progressive or that they would have uh, uh, Jim in that position at USC? Well, you know, we interviewed Varun Soni, mm -hmm. who's the uh, head of the program there uh, a while ago. And um, I know them and I've been to campus and, you know, there's a f couple of dozen, if not more, uh, chaplains associated with the program. Most of them are part time. Uh, Jim is uh, the uh, associate dean, I, I guess is his title. Um, so it's a very progressive place and a very pluralistic place. I mean, USC campus is incredibly diverse. And uh, so they have done a great job of accommodating a wide range of uh, spiritual and religious uh, interests and um, in engagements. Yeah, no, it's um, uh, from our last interview. I mean, yeah, yeah, that was it's certainly the case. And they've reached out and tried not to be too traditional and uh, uh, embracing all, all and everyone from every tradition. Uh, I, I guess a, a, a couple of things. I mean, we addressed it in the interview, but uh, two things. One is when we talk about mindfulness now, do most people who are involved in mindfulness, uh, are they referring to basically the same type of practice? And number two, when somebody um, has a Christian uh, uh, you know, belief system that they're you know, they're coming from and they use mindfulness, does that affect the mindfulness practice that they use as opposed to a that, Hindu or a Muslim or an agnostic? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. And um, I don't know that there are any data. We could have asked Jim that uh, because, you know, they have a, a big, on, his, on their campus, they have a big mindfulness program that's just uh, non-sectarian. It's just anybody mm -hmm. can, you know, it's like, right. like mindfulness being taught in public where your, you know, religious or affiliation or uh, non-affiliation doesn't matter. It's just being presented as a scientific practice, as a um, universal practice, just like uh, TM was presented and other forms of meditation. And so um, it would be interesting to see Somebody should do research whether there's a difference in outcome or in the actual way it's practiced if it's taught in a religious context, ba you know, the same basic technique. Right. And I don't know. I don't know how that would work and how when, uh, you know, in Jim's book, Mindful uh, Christianity, uh, and when he teaches in the context of being a uh, a minister, whether the instructions are actually uh, tweaked to a you know to make to sort of Christianize it, and whether that would have a difference in the outcome. I mean, that's that's an interesting question. Yeah. It's like I, I don't know how how that would uh, play out. I know I could if there's an analogy. We know that um, centering prayer is essentially. Uh, using very similar instructions that uh, TM and other forms of mantra-based effortless meditation practices are are done, um, but it's Christianized in the mm -hmm. sense that you know they they use God language and and all that. So whether there's a difference in outcome or it's just a difference in the way people would describe what they experience, it's hard to know. Yeah. And well, I, I mean, you're asking a great question. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I would think that if mindfulness is, as I understand it, you know, being sitting there, being very neutral in your attitude towards whatever thoughts, feelings, uh, whatever is going on, and then asking yourself the question, who is it that's observing this, and whatever, whatever, that if you just leave it like that, then uh, I don't see where any uh, religious attitudes or beliefs would affect that. But I guess my question is, if you write a book about, uh, or if you have an angle like, you know, mindfulness 
for Christians, uh, then uh, are you adding something to that formula or doing something differently? Yeah. Or you, you know, so, and, and, and my, my guess is, Phil, that there are different teachers out there that uh, will do it different ways. And then the question comes, does all mindfulness have to be the same as all right, mindfulness right. meditation? Uh, you know, if you do something a little differently, is it no longer mindfulness? And, and uh, right. who decides that sort of thing? And uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I guess whatever no. works for people. <laughs> Yeah, and, and look, we already know there's a lot of things being called mindfulness, and there's variation in mindfulness practice. You know, there's, uh, and, and we know that uh, when it's taught in a Buddhist context as, as vipassana meditation or insight meditation, it's a little different when it's taught in a hospital or, a, a, you know. But a, what is basic vipassana? You know more about it than I do, and it, it, it's come up a number of times in the last few interviews, uh, is Vipassana a traditional form of mindfulness? Yeah, I, from what I understand, uh, mindfulness is um, a sort of secular term for basically the same practice. And, you know, there are variations on it, but it's essentially a sort of passive observation of what passes through the mind and a noticing um, or the breath, or uh, the breath, and or the breath, and you know we should we should get somebody uh, on it to just speak about the nuances of the practice because I know there are, there are uh, variations, but but, but generally it's basically there's no that yeah there's no worshipped aspect to it. No, not as far as I know. There certainly is worship aspect to Buddhist practice, but not that form of meditation, as far as I can tell. Right. Well, I, I think that uh, mindfulness is a, a big new area. It happens to be very popular now. I think one of the reasons it's as popular as it is is because it's been somehow endorsed uh, either directly or indirectly by the, I think directly by the Dalai Lama. And uh, you go in any hospital now or, and you'll see literature on mindfulness that's available. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, become, you know, uh, and, and a lot of research is actually taking place. I, I, and that's, I think, the critical thing. There's been research and basically the efforts of John Kabat-Zinn in secularizing it and bringing it into the medical and psychiatric context, or I should say psychotherapeutic mm -hmm. context. You know, that's it's a similar thing that happened with uh, Hatha Yoga and with uh, meditation uh, earlier. So, you know, this is just another example of uh, what we thought of as Eastern religious or spiritual practices being uh, made uh, more uh, available to everybody as non-religious practices. Right. I want, but but what's interesting is Jim doing it in the Christian context, and uh, you know that is part and parcel with um, his engagement in what's. Uh, being called progressive Christianity, which is, uh, I don't know how big it is, but um, I, I've looked into it mainly because I'm, I'm on Jim's mailing list. Um, and it's an effort by Christians uh, to uh, open up traditional Christianity and Christian worship. And, uh, and the term progressive is not just a socio-political term, although there's a lot of sort of social justice aspects to what I, I've seen, but it's also, you know, let's reinterpret what who Jesus was, what the scriptures say, what the gospels mean, and it's a it's a big opening up, and and it, I I would guess, and in, it, it, it's an inclusive one that um, uh, brings in spiritual practice like mindfulness right. and uh, and other forms of Christian uh, contemplative Christianity. Right, and so, you know that uh, uh, those that are fundamentalists in whether Christianity or uh, whatever other religion uh, mindfulness may uh, become associated with or become a tool of, uh, the, those people are the ones that are most likely to challenge it and feel that it's uh, invading their space and uh, you know, taking away from the, uh, uh, the, the their, their basic message. 
So it, it, that, that's why I, I think in many ways it's better to just keep it in the secular realm. But I guess uh, uh, it, there are always people that are going to want to incorporate it into their uh, religion because they they often feel like it's given them new insight into their religion. And by the way, insight meditation is that similar to to mindfulness, or is that a different category? I I think it's basically the same. But we should get a a, right. a teacher in there. I think insight meditation uh, was a is basically vipassana. Mm-hmm. And probably synonymous with mindfulness, although there may be nuances right. that uh, distinguish them. Cool. Well, uh, very interesting fellow. Uh, yes. If you're at UC, USC or in the area, Jim is there. I'm sure he'd be happy to talk to you. And, and again, uh, uh, folks, go to our uh, podcast site, spiritmatterstalk.com, and uh, be in touch with us. Let us know uh, what you think. Or if there's anybody yes. you recommend we have on the show. We have a committee should, that reviews such things. We should point out that Jim is our 99th interview. Right. And, and so, soon we'll be posting number 100. Yeah, that, that will be a call for great celebration. And uh, <laughs> feel free to, to, to... Anybody out there that's listened to all 100, when, when that final 100th one is posted... Uh, <laughs> We yeah. want to hear about it. Uh, yeah. We may even have you on as a guest. <laughs> Great. Why not? All right. Why? All right. Until next time. Okay.